It's happening. It's happening. Hello, 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 hello. Hello, friends. It's all coming together. Look at all these people. Wait, I'm I'm prepared. I'm prepared, I promise. Hey, Jeff. Hey, I am prepared for this moment. Wait. Yes. Nice. There it is. It's like a regular episode of Logic Live, right? Wow, look at all these people. This is great. You know, I was thinking to myself, even if only one person shows up, I could talk with them for an hour. That'd be fine. But this is more than one person. Great to see you all. And I know you might not be able to see everyone right now, but I just wanted to have this opening on for those at home at YouTube. Hope everyone's having an excellent day. They just keep coming. So this is a bit of a different uh, platform today, but we've done it before. So it's not too out of the question. Oh man, that intro is so short. Uh, wait, wait, I know how to do this. Stop share. Hello. <laughs> it's different. It's different and it's not, I'm not used to it, but that's okay. Um, this is a lot of people and this is awesome. Thanks for being here, everybody. Um, I think people are just going to still keep popping in potentially, but um, the plan for today is just what you'd expect, a hangout, catching up, um, and it is going to be going up on YouTube uh, once we're done, so you know, be careful about any NDA stuff, as you all oh, obviously would, but um, before we jump into the fun part, um, I think I'd still have to go through the normal routine of announcements and sponsor messages, so... I practiced this. I practiced this. I'm going to mute everybody. And you can turn your camera off if you want. It's I'm just going to talk through the normal slideshow, as you'd expect, uh, for a couple minutes. But we'll be back in a second. Um, where are we? There it is. Okay, I think we're good. Um, this episode of Logic Live is brought to you, of course, by AJA. And they've been together since flame with flame since 2006. If you need Boris FX plugins, you can save 15% on all the Boris, Boris FX products, now including Synthize. Joining up with the other products here on the screen, available with a great discount if you use our affiliate links right here. Head on over to logic.tv slash Boris FX and click on one of the links there to lock in the awesome deal. We do have a merch store, of course, and I saw a handful of people with their merch at the New York City user group last week, which was amazing. So if you want to be cool like them and be the proud new owner of a Logic fanny pack like Brian Bailey, or pick up t-shirts, stickers, notebooks, AirPod cases, phone cases, and more, stop by the merch store on the Logic TV website. And now, of course, we acknowledge the heart of the Logic community, the patrons. Big shout out to everyone helping to support what makes this right here keep on keeping on. This is our up-to-date patron list. Just updated it right before the show. Thank you to everyone on this list. Clocking in at 158 patrons as of this week. Big thank you to everyone here for supporting the community and help it grow and to thrive. If you want to support what we're doing here on Logic, you get a few bonus perks, most notably the post-show Logic Live patrons Q&A that I usually talk about for, for this show, but it just so happens that this is a very special show and the first show in many that we won't be having the patrons Q&A, but in general, you get to hang out with the guest of the show and dig deeper, ask specific questions, elaborate, hang out with the other members of the community. But in general, your support helps keep the lights on and keep this moving, so it's very much appreciated. Head on over to patreon.com slash logic TV and support for as little as five bucks a month. And if you haven't heard about it already, Logic Academy Pro is a learning platform with a monthly subscription to connect you with a handful of diversely skilled instructors with the goal of helping you level up your flame skills. 
Randy has poured his heart and soul into it over the last few months with a plethora of tutorials and partnerships to make it a very well-rounded way to level up your flame skills, no matter what level you are in your career, but with extra attention to those looking to break into the flame world. A big thank you to our current members of Logic Academy Pro, and as a little bonus, we're giving away a free month uh, to Logic Academy Pro at the end of the show. So if you're still here by then, you might be a lucky winner. And a huge thank you to everyone who showed up for last week's New York City Flame user group. It was the first one in four years, and it was really a blast. Uh, wonderful success. It was a great space, great conversations, great people, uh, great presentations by Brian Bailey, Jan Clyer, John Gearing, Andy Milkus, uh, and special guests Fred and Stefan from Autodesk. And here's to hoping that it's the first of many. Um, these are some of my favorite pictures from the meetup. But if you want to see the rest, you can find those pictures on the forums under the New York Flame User Group on 117 registration link thread, I think the name of it is called. Uh, had a giveaway. Ben Murray was the big winner. There he is. <laughs> uh, there's the fanny pack, of course, as I mentioned. Uh, and with that user group behind us, it's time to ramp up for the next one, the Chicago user group. It's coming up fast. It's not this coming Wednesday, but it's the next Wednesday after that. It is Wednesday, February 7th at Flavor, Chicago. Address up on the screen. It's 515 North State Street, Suite 2500. You can expect demos from Andy Milkus, Brian Higgins, and Randy McEntee with special guest appearance again by none other than Fred and Stefan from Autodesk. We got a taste of what they had to show at the New York user group. And let me just say that if you aren't a member of the Flame Beta and you don't know what they'll present, be presenting, and if you do some decent compositing in Flame, you will be very excited to hear what they have to say, but I'm not going to spoil it. And it's not going to be recorded, so make sure you RSVP for that meetup and show up. You can find the RSVP links on the forums under the Chicago user group thread or in the email that was sent out uh, earlier this week. And that's it. We're on to the show. I will, um, I guess, wait, wait, wait. Allow people to unmute themselves. There it is. So now you can unmute yourself. I don't think I have anyone waiting. Hello. Welcome to What's Everyone Working On? I hope you're all having a great day so far. I'm down to start us off. Oh, Tim Frail's not having a great day today? <laughs> well, it's okay. Your plants are beautiful. I I'm working. Oh, you're working. It feels like you're usually working on the weekend. You're, you're leaving true thanks, to that song. Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> Everybody's work. Um, well, I'm, there's not too many people here, so we could probably just treat this like a normal, if you're familiar with our patrons chat, just to kind of chime in. I'm down to start us off. I'm, and I had a question. I was thinking about this. Look at me being prepared. Um, I'm working on, I was working on a couple of normal commercial jobs. So for those of you who are used to commercial jobs, maybe this is for you. Um, something came up that comes up once in a while. I'm not going to say every time, but it's decent. And it's that we had a job with multiple aspect ratios, which is the norm now. And um, we had comps, like the end card had some comps. Uh, but the catch was that uh, different aspect ratios had different uh, positioned elements to those comps. And so I've come up with a nice, solid way to handle that that I like, that makes sense to me. But I'm curious for those who uh, run into that, what's your secret solution or special solution to a comp that needs to be rendered out multiple times for different aspect ratios? Do you do anything special to it or do you muscle through it? Any any, uh, any insight? Muscle through. Muscle through it. <laughs> Pretty much, I mean, did, yeah. Did this, this discussion has been going on for the last six months, maybe, maybe even before that. Mm -hmm. how to like deliver all the different aspect ratios, especially now with taking social media, like nine by 16, four by five, one by one, and even sometimes digital uh, weird aspect screens. So I don't have a secret source. I just muscle through, but I hope um, the developer team is looking into this. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I mean, the reason I mention it is not exactly to, I mean, obviously we're always, the whole point of us being here in this call is improvement. We're always looking to improve. So uh, I'm, I'd love to hear if anyone has a cool solution, but maybe this could be something that I could, maybe it's like one of those things that I could show off at some point um, with like a video tutorial or something. But 
my my solution i'm using publishing a lot and open clips and stuff and um it can be tricky with publishing to like branch things off but um a simple solution for me if you are publishing if you have that right node um and you have your batch um the way that i've found to branch things off that's i think a nice elegant solution is to you duplicate that right node and then you like label it explicitly like 9 by 16 and you have to carefully rename it in all of the areas like uh the files have to be called 9 by 16 now the open clip has to be called 9 by 16 the batch setup if you want to save that separately and then um I can then i use that, what was that i can help you with that when oh, you're you, you're, you you're uh, published or something you're published your published right nodes, yeah, hmm. they all get um, a special token shot name, right? And that token is repeated throughout those files, open clips, and and setups. So the only thing you need to change is the shot name, which is that little box in the bottom left. If you just add an abbreviation to that, so it's, I don't know, shot 50, 16 by 9, then that proliferates throughout, throughout all the, um, all the uh, file paths that you're talking about. So you yes. don't have to do it three times. Yeah. Oh, um, but the thing is, I want to keep it in the same batch because I don't want to have to update two batches. I want to just yeah. update one batch. So yeah. you keep it in the so same it's just batch. Modifying, but... It's just modifying the, the not the clip name, but the shot name. It's not necessarily obvious where that is, but it has a little separate box down on the bottom left-hand side of the right node called shot name. And you just add an extra bit to the end of the shot name. And then because that becomes the token throughout the file path you only have to do it once i'm always i'm always doing that for uh pre comps and and branching off same right node just change it once and it proliferates throughout Sing, so you don't example. even duplicate the the right node yeah do do i do duplicate the right node but i don't need to change the file path the clip name and the open clip name i just change it once in one little box area and it and the token takes over Oh, so so the 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 word the um shot name field is specific to the right node and not the batch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The shot name is specific to the right node and not the batch, and the shot name is part of the right node, and that's the only thing you need to need to change. It just well, makes it easier change. and less less easy to, you know, less likely to make a mistake or a typo or something. I'll mess I'll mess with that. That sounds fun, but I guess the the end of what I was going to say was uh, I have so I have that second right node now. And then what I usually do is I set up a, a series of MUX nodes um, to switch between the two different outputs. Um, so like, yeah, it, and I have one out one MUX node at the very end, just before the right nodes. That's that's my switcher, and I link that to all the other MUX nodes that need to be have things switch around. And then so when I just keep the order correctly, so my the highest right node will be like zero on the mux and then the next one down will be one and then the two two i usually need three um and then yeah it switches all of those mux nodes and it and it uh i think that's a cool elegant solution to that problem but i think you're right um uh sinan that the dev team could use something built in that's a little bit more elegant than that because it does take some brain power to keep track of that did you did you read chris's Oh, sorry, if you're doing a specific like N card for nine by 16, you're rearranging position on that specifically for that aspect ratio. So I don't know how the dev team can really do like a, a uh, you know, a magic fix for something like that. Uh, maybe just have yeah. something in place to, because I don't know because it's still a new setup though right you're still having to do the work specifically for that one weird aspect ratio yeah, yeah like nine by that, 16 that... might be close to your four by five but it's not going to be different and then the, the client wants to get something closer to the bottom of the screen so you're you're always messing with with, with, with something mm. oh, yeah and then and this has been a problem in feature films for forever because Oh, really? You know, you have scope, you have a flat, you have some crazy guy that wants to do like a 2.15 aspect ratio. You know, th this is this has been going on for a, a lot longer than just the, uh, the the social media revolution. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. Yeah, I, I haven't really thought too much about what a dev solution could look like for that. But 
maybe just some easier way to be able to branch batches, write nodes off so that it's a little bit more simple. But yeah, I don't know. You know, but I basically just muscle through it like Sinan said, but what I try to do is I try to keep at least my footage connected hmm. so that when they, I if I have to redo a comp, for instance, I replace it in one, it replaces it in everything. And that way I don't have to wait till everything's all approved before I go ahead and do the do the socials. But there's no automatic button that's gonna re reframe and reformat properly. You know, you have to go through and check every shot and often you have to build new titles because they just don't work in yeah. all formats. And, and no, there's gonna be no magic button that's ever gonna fix that. No, no, yeah. definitely not. I mean, even for nine by sixteen, now you got the the Instagram Reels nine by sixteen, and you also got the YouTube nine by sixteen, and the Snapchat nine by sixteen needs three hundred fifty pixels from the bottom. It's just like a and, and now now they're sending me versions of the what they look like in real life, so nothing will get placed behind their stupid little fucking icons. <laughs> I'm sorry, did I sound bitter? Yeah, I started running up against that too. Yeah, it's so it's <laughs> such a nightmare. <laughs> the safety areas are crazy though. My my clients don't seem to know about them, but um, yes, I've seen I've seen some of those safety areas for TikTok, and it's ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, yeah. YouTube like, there's a much picture that's yeah, valid. YouTube you know? is like like this bit. YouTube, YouTube was YouTube ridiculous, is, isn't it? And the, so, the sixteen yeah, by nine YouTube channels. is like this weird shaped polygon sort of thing. I I remember I made a. I was doing an ad and it had a pretty extensive legal text for that. And so the legal text had to be in the middle of the screen. It was like covering up most of the advertisement. <laughs> it was so stupid. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. sometimes what some clients do is they'll just letterbox the full picture in that area. Mm. Just leave everything else black. Mm. Yeah, that's an option. I mean, um, are people really watching it anyway? They're, they're, they're trying not to. Um, but yeah, it's it's great insight. And thanks thanks for that picture, Richard. I, I think I'm going to change the way that I work in that one. But I think the big reason that I bring, it, bring up what I brought up was because uh, I think the first thing that came to mind years ago when I was first starting this was to just make a different batch, like duplicate your batch. Now you have a separate batch. But the annoying part there is you update like if you have a change, you have to update one, you have to update the other. And that bugged me. And that's when I came up with this idea of using Mux nose to switch between two different outputs. And yeah. I think that's, that, that's where maybe there's room for dev involvement uh, because I one of my biggest annoyances is you actually, you still have to render that out two times. You have to like carefully set your Mux node and then render out the one version. And then when that's finished, you carefully set your Mux node and then carefully set up your output to the correct right node and then render that one. It would be really cool if there was some way for it to like know that it's rendering, know what's going on and like be like, okay, I want to render out my two aspect ratios. Mux zero is this one and Mux one is this one. Maybe there's Python room for that, but I don't know. I haven't figured that out. Could be something interesting. But that's fun. I mean, uh, Chris, Chris came up with a wacky, I think his name's Chris. Um, he came up with a wacky um alternative where he used a single open clip but just ch offset the um frame count it kind of confused me a little bit but um he would have you know oh, between wow. zero and 100 would be his clean plate then between 250 and 350 would be uh the comp and all that kind of stuff but um yeah it was an interesting approach but i guess i guess that way then you could you could press one render and just have a a constant change to the position you know like a, oh that's like a cool idea. Would just, everything would just flip over and, and then it would be a, but it seems, um, I often just have, um, I often just have, uh, I, I try and um, encourage open gate and do all my comps open gate. And then at the very end, it branches off into, and it's mostly titles that give me issues. So then I branch off into, into a little stream and you can, you can kind of do them both at the same time and then click render or render two different. Yeah. That kind of branching. Yeah, well, I mean, not a lot of people use it, but we still use BFX. So I got my timeline for nine by sixteen, sixteen by nine, but the the, the comp is done in four K within the BFX. 
And then what I pipe out, then I can reframe. Sometimes we shoot for vertical and horizontal separately, and that's when they get the material to be switched between the height and width versions. But usually I have everything in full gate, like you said, Richard, and then um, do the uh, use the action timeline effects to like frame it, place it. Do you run into any issues with BFX? I know it's it's slightly a touchy subject in that it's it's one of those divisive ones of some some people who are against BFX find that it it yeah, is historically it's like at some point reels problems. or like <laughs> it's the Similar. smoke hotkeys or flame hotkeys. But I've, I've always used uh, BFX, and when we were when I was supervising at a big facility back in Turkey, and here we're still using BFX. We're just like a two person team, two people team. And it serves all our purposes. It's just, it just works great for us. Old smoke. Yeah, I'm in that same camp. Affects a lot because that's all we have for the longest, longest time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I wonder if some of the issues that people are afraid of were things in the past that have been fixed. I mean, I've used BFX in the last year and a half, and all the things that people always are afraid of haven't happened to me. That doesn't happen. Mean that they might happen at an inopportune time. Yeah. But it's not clear that we so many people have shied away from it, but we may just not realize that it's actually decently stable at this point. Yeah. Very you know, I, I don't use it that much. Um, I usually only use it for quickie stuff, you know, a quick cleanup on the right on the timeline. And the reason isn't that I don't feel it's unstable or unworkable or anything like that. It works as good as action, but the fact that it doesn't connect well with other Thing. Mm -hmm. So if I have to swap out the footage and I've got a complicated v uh, BFX, then it starts to be much more difficult to swap shit out. I, I it use really it easy. for quick things yeah. too. I mean, I, yeah. I use it for like, I'll start doing my big things in an, a regular batch setup, but then I'll use it for like titles or, you know, something that I know is going to be moving around that'll, that'll render quickly because what ends up happening is if I don't, it'll end up being a big comp and then it will every time I move it or trim it or do something else you have to re-render and so then you can always do the secret you know pre-render thing and have that pipe out but it just still kind of bogs me down if I don't have a render done so it, it also seems much more friendly when you're actually with clients you know you just plop mm -hmm. right in you don't have to like make a batch group and put it into a thing it's, <laughs> it's there you know that's a good, I mean, it is like a one click thing. <laughs> a, a lot these days, like the last three weeks, really? I've had to go in like, like, like five days. Sucks. Well, I would, I would insist that uh, once you, at least this is how I feel. Once you feel real comfortable with publishing, publishing feels very, very quick too. Um, it's still uh, more it's, set up than, hit, than hitting ship tab. It's, it's more set up, no question, but we're talking I can publish something in 10 seconds. Oh, I, I, I publish all the time, but that's yeah. not the problem. The problem is when you've got a, a room full of people and they're all looking at you and you're like, okay, we got to get all this done. And it's got, you know, I got to get to my golf game by 4.30. You're like, oh, crap. <laughs> I'm sorry for my voice. I, I think I picked up some laryngitis in, in New York. So <laughs> Yeah, blame New York. <laughs> Damn, I'm sorry to hear that, though. That's a yeah, shame. it's all good. Um, anyone else working on anything cool? That's the point of today. Anyone? I was going to ask well, Michael, I what does shift tab do? Sorry. What yeah. shift tab do? Yeah. Shift tab. What is shift tab, Michael? Oh, uh, maybe it's control. It, that gets you into the soft, the, the soft effect that brings up the, the effects ribbon in, in small oh, right. that, that, uh, that gets you into BFX. Cool. That's just quick. Small cockies. Oh. Oh, keys. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Did I see uh, Sinan raise your hand? I think that was the one that yeah, I saw. Yeah, I mean, I recently finished like a really nice commercial. If I can share my screen and if you have 40 seconds to watch through it. I'd love that. That's definitely the yeah. point of today. Here we okay. go. You are a cool. co-host, Sinan. You can share. Okay. Let me go and find it. It's fun. And if we don't have too many others, I'm down to share my screen about something that I'm working on too later. Oh, it's this. Let's go for the director's cut. Ooh. Oysters. Yes and no. 
Okay, here you go. We'll have to imagine the sound, but that's all right. Subliminal. Oh. <laughs> subliminal. Oh, subliminal. Oh, that's not subliminal. <laughs> subliminal. That is right in there. <laughs> Whoa. Well. Wow, what amazing food. Is milk is not here? This must be a European commercial. It's for the Super Bowl. <laughs> or from some infectious disease doctor, one of the two. Oh my god, can you imagine this in the Super Bowl? That's is this is this a ton of fans? I mean, can footage? you imagine this in the US? I can't even imagine this being aired in the United States. That's Everyone exactly what so I was wound up. Exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, I love it. This is wow. fantastic. Norway's I, I don't know. Story. We did one at uh Psyop a few years back for <laughs> baby razors called Shave Your Bush or Trim Your Bush. <laughs> <laughs> and it was all about plants with, you know, pubic hair shaped, you know, bushes and subliminal know, planters and stuff. It was really weird. And I didn't think it would ever air. And it aired a lot. Well, <laughs> it made it to Australia. Well, I that. <laughs> wow. So, Nan, that's well, an amazing the, commercial. Very well done. Yeah, this was for like Condomerie, Norway's biggest adult store. Um, five years ago, just before I started working here. They did the first one. I don't know if you heard the music. It's Vivaldi's uh, Four Seasons. I mean, oh, it's funny. Tr 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 so it's sort of cut to the beat. Classic. Um, and um, that was more light and colorful because it was all sweet and desserts. But now this one is darker in tone with harder images, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I can't but wait to then, find it on YouTube and share it. Well, yeah, I'll share it. Um, in yeah, I want to see it. I want to see yeah, it sure. and with the sound and play yeah, yeah, it and stuff. So I can't wait to get yeah. it. Yeah. Right. Uh, is everyone on Discord? Shall I share it on Discord? Oh yeah, do that. Okay. Works for me. What kind yeah. of? Uh, can you tell us anything about how it was to work on that? What did you have to do? That was yeah. What's what's what was some well, of the heavy lifting? I, you had I, to do? I, I, there was no heavy lifting actually. It was no? just bragged. I mean, this is like a cool commercial that I worked on. It, oh, there gotcha. was nothing like a, a lot of stuff. Just some minor uh, line removals, like basic masking and like erasing some stuff. But that was just nice. it. But I mean, for brags, it's it's just great to be in such a work. Yeah, good for good for a bit of humor. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, some of the favorite commercials I like to show that I've worked on over the years, I had very little to do with, but they were just so well written and well shot. Mm. You know, it just felt really good to be part of that whole spot. Yeah. I know that feeling. That's maybe great. we should do a pod. Maybe we should, we should do a Zoom on stuff we've worked on because it's tough to show stuff that you're working on now. You know, at least for me, like everyone's NDA. Every job I work on, it's like beyond. Yeah, hush, secret. You know, I think maybe it's like a more of a hey, bring a spot or two next time, and you know, show it and do a quick hey, here's what we did, kind of a thing. Yeah, on our other Discord channel, we have a uh, work showcase sub channel. I mean, maybe we uh, just add that to this Discord, and then people can just share when they have something they want to sh show. Oh, I love that idea. Yes, that would be great because I think we all have different things, and you know, I think it would be a neater curation. Of, of images rather than just having stuff on YouTube and looking it up. I mean, we all have pretty unique stuff that we work on and being able mm -hmm. to see the stuff that happens around the world would be cool. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And just, I think, you know, the people who work on TV shows, that's a whole different world than the people who work on commercials versus uh, David who works on museum installations a lot of the time. I mean, it's a very, very diverse bunch. I love it. Well, I can't show anything. I'm working on a Super Bowl spot right now. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> you know, I when you see the M and M's ad, that's me. Oh, I very can't cool. Show it not for the NDAs, but because I am so fucking pissed off at this job. I just want to rip <laughs> my into shreds. It's just been so miserable. This is why I missed the user group. Same job I'm working on. Oh no! This is oh, my we really third, missed you. Fourth weekend in a row I've been here on. This. Oh, that's not healthy. And it's that's shit. Not good. 
That sucks. I'm, I I really missed you, Tim. I was looking forward to what you had to show. I, I hope that we get to see it in some way it, one day. You know, what I had to show actually wasn't all that great. And part of the shtick <laughs> of what I was going to show was when I went to finalize it and polish it all off, my great idea didn't actually work anymore. I, I don't know why. So I was going to make that part of the thing, <laughs> but it, it wasn't that great. You know. Oh, well, I think you sell yourself short. You have great stuff. I, I was groping a little bit, but, you know, I wanted to do something. <laughs> um, did, did anyone else have uh, some recent stuff to show? I have something. I mean, I needed. can try. I can try to show you the 3D thing I've been working on for, three, for two months. I can only show the first part of it, though, because of NDA. Um, but I don't know Whoa. if it's going to play because I'm going to be off my cell phone. You know, the, the puzzle thing, were you in on any of the conversations <laughs> during I was, office hours? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, totally I've fun. got it. I've got it, but I don't know if it'll play on this, so I may have to post it later, but I can try. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, maybe you can, uh, if if you're not too busy driving, because I, I, I was there for some of the I pulled over. Oh, okay. That's good. That's that's safe. Thank you. I mean, me I, if, 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 I, if I can't play it here, then I could probably do a logic live and go through all the stupidity that i have to deal yeah, with yeah if anything fill some people in on some of the adventures you have <laughs> okay it's a good story so the the biggest the biggest issue was the uh this is all green screen the whole thing bunch of and and the thing the scripts changed four or five times in the process of all of this but they had a a, a really cool art piece done for stills for this so we were shooting video in one studio and shooting stills in the other um and they did this puzzle and it was all, and they, they created it in cinema 4d and it, and it looked for print. So it's super high res. The plates are like 25 K. I mean, they're huge. And so, um, they look, it looks really nice for print. So they do the side of a building and stuff with this. It looks really good, but they wanted me to take this puzzle from cinema 4d and animate it into this video. And that sounds easy and all except for the fact that the guy that did it's a still guy and he didn't map the, the uvs he did projections only so when you move the, the polys they the, the the faces move off of them and it's a bunch of different faces with different pieces of each face in each puzzle piece so it more it looks like a uh i don't know like a montage of people's different skin color faces because this is about dermatology for people of skin of color and uh, it's pretty, pretty cool piece, but I went through hell trying to figure out how to get it into flame so that I could animate it. And then I even tried to animate it in Cinema 4D and it broke. So uh, trying to consolidate this down, I, I bought licenses, did it all, couldn't figure it out. I had another guy who was an After Effects guy who knew Cinema 4D enough to be dangerous and he couldn't figure it out. Uh, I met him through my job at Carbon, so, and we couldn't get it figured out, so I... I was uh, searching, I was throwing out my last raw and I was searching on, uh, I went to LinkedIn because Andy, or not Andy, uh, Randy had told me that posted on LinkedIn and somebody from that world would reach out. So I searched on hit, you know, I searched on LinkedIn and I saw a Cinema 4D artist that was affiliated with Randy and he lived in, uh oh, Utah, Utah. No, it wasn't Utah. It was somewhere else. I think it was Utah. I can't remember. He lives out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> um, but I, I uh, invited him to a conversation. I, I was like, uh, cool, because he did. He did. Um, he's a Maya guy and also um, what's I don't remember the other 3D program that's big. And he's he's big into that, too. But he also knows Cinema 4D. So he looked at it. Remapped the UV, created UVs, baked all the textures, re remapped, you know, rebuilt all the polys and everything, and Maya output it to Flame and or for Flame and sent it to me, and it worked. Uh, we had a couple of issues with Flame with clipping the camera near and far, and that has to be set right, or the polys break, and um, or the textures break on the polys and stuff. But we got it figured out, and it and it actually the client saw my first pass of this animation and loved it so much that they had the client come in and then they made me reverse it at the back end and i'm like oh no <laughs> it's, it's, but i got it so it, it actually worked really well if you have everything your uvs are correct the textures are baked 
and the poly counts high enough, uh, when you bring it in, it works great in flame. You can relight it and everything else. But if it's if one thing is not right, it's a nightmare. But we got it. So I was, I don't know if I can share my screen or not. I can try to play this, but let's see if it'll work. But it is, uh, let's see, screen. Yep, screen. you can share your screen now. Uh, start. Probably going to show things it shouldn't. Don't know. Can you see my frame IO? Ooh, I see myself. I see Jeff. Oh, sorry. Now do you <laughs> see frame IO? Yeah, we uh, can. Yep, yep. Cool. So these are all people on green screen that I put textures and stuff behind that they wanted. Here it goes. Wow, looks great. <laughs> that was it. I can't show anymore. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's that was three months worth of stupidity to get that figured out. Wow. It does look very good. It is estimated. So, but yeah, later I'll be able to show more. But I got to figure out how to turn off the screen share. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, stop. Nice. So yeah, it's uh, thanks. It's. I mean, it doesn't look like a whole lot now, but if you, in all no, but reality, if they came it, to you and wanted to swap out a face, you could do it that easy. You know what yes. I mean? That's the beauty of yep. bringing the 3D into the flame, isn't it? You know, you can, yeah. you can do, 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 do without having to re-render it out of 3D and stuff. Yep. So it, it worked out real nice. And I mean, the hardest part for me was getting the lighting to match what they had in Cinema 4D because they did it with IBLs. And the IBLs did not match uh -huh. when I brought them into flame. And I didn't know the settings of where they had it in space and all of that. And even though I got the numbers out of Cinema 4D, it didn't look right when I put them in in flame. So I'm like, this is stupid. I'm just going to relight it with my own lights, which I did. And it worked great. Worked oh, great. Cool. And I, I cannot believe that I could get this close. You know, I could bring that puzzle piece to dead on camera and it held up because mm -hmm. of the size of the plates. Now, here's the funny thing. In my batch group working on this, it was slower than dirt. But when I brought it in, because of timing purposes, I need I, I created a BFX over the top of the background because that background has to merge into another shot. And it was the easiest way for me to do that. So I brought the batch into a BFX and it was five times as fast working in BFX with that 3D than it was in batch itself. And I could not for the oh, life of me figure out why. But I was like, oh my gosh, because I thought I was going to be That's I mean, crazy. Right. I it was really crazy. Understand that because that doesn't make any sense to me. I'm on yeah. Linux. I'm on a yeah. uh, P620 huh. with a uh, 3975 Threadripper or all that good stuff. Could, could it be like size of the canvas that if in batch, the size, your pixel resolution was the overall puzzle piece versus if you're on the sequence, it's the sequence resolution, so you have way fewer it, pixels. It could be. It, it oh. could have been. But I, I built the batch groups uh, at UHD, and the timeline's all UHD, so I don't know why. Mm. Um, because I have to build it at – I had to maintain it at 12-bit UHD in order for – they're putting this on a gigantic wall in a booth, and people are going to be six feet away from it. So I have to have it at least that or it's going to fall apart. Uh, we did testing with it, but it's it was pretty neat. And then I it goes the other way, so it comes on the screen and then comes at you at the end and reveals the logo and stuff behind it, which I it looks even neater there. But I can't show you that until it's out in the world because uh, then you'll know who it is. <laughs> so, good, huh? And now I'm gonna get in trouble. <laughs> so, no, I mean I will say if, if you need me to edit that part out of this video, I could, but it is going to go on YouTube. But uh, you know, you, you probably should edit because the file name gave it away. Oh, is the file name in there? I didn't yeah. see that. Yeah, file name was in there, so you should edit it out. If we could blur the file name, Jeff. that would be great. You got to post blur, <laughs> <laughs> or give it to me. I know and I'll do, it. do that. Okay, I'll uh, I'll fix it up for the <laughs> upload. No worries. If you don't mind, because I don't want to get fired. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a good job. I mean, other than the fact that that we, you know, my the agency has to learn to manage the client a little bit better, but it's well, their huge first time. Reach that logic live has don't you know? It's instantly going to be. <laughs> <laughs> hey Mark, do you mind if I ask you a question about your three D in flame? Yeah. 
So you you um you said you did some relighting on the puzzle pieces yourself inside action, right? Yeah, I relit it. Was, I relit the was whole that thing. like was that by using geometry and 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 setting up lights and stuff like that? Well, I just used the lights. I I used yeah. lights in there and moved them out behind the camera and yeah. then I turned on shadow casting and set it the way I, yeah, yeah. all the, you know, decay and everything I wanted and then the background, I ended up as I said, I brought it into a VFX because I needed the background to be the same. So if you saw that when it transitions out, there's the same background in the next shot and it needed to match and the lighting needed to match. So when I did that, um, it worked fine, but it also cast those shadows on the background that was already there. So cool. uh, VFX worked real good. I'm going to tell you. Uh, and I was shocked that I could work faster in the VFX than I could in batch itself. It was making me crazy that I couldn't, that batch was choking on me so bad. And I'd never had that happen before. Yeah. It's good to I hear started a good, working in 3d. Good to hear so, a good VFX success story then. Yeah. It worked great for me. And I had, I ended up having to use VFX for almost all the graphics because they, they go across multiple shots and the shots transition in the background a certain way and i i needed the graphics to be over the top of multiple shots and doing that batch will be a pain in the royal butt so it was easier to use vfx for all that so, mark yeah. what was your uh shadow casting type uh, because i always like mess up with 3d vsm 3d csm all those different stuff in the shadow cast node i'd have, have to pull to up and look i don't remember Okay, uh, but I mean, if anyone has any like experience with shadow casting in Flame, I played around with a lot, but it still bums me that you have to have those two types of pop-ups. They need to be the same, right? And I don't know why they are there, like separately, and I, I can't for the love of God figure out what they mean or how they work out. Another recent job, uh, I had to do cast shadows but I knew that the agency was going to mess around with the, with the with the direction of the light and the diffuseness of the shadow. So I ended up like having it was just the text casting a shadow. So I made it two D text and an image, flipped it round and blurred it or adjusted it um, with skew. So it was like like a shadow map, manual shadow map. But cast shadows yeah. still like a burn in my side well the other thing we used them for which worked really well uh, i had paco helping me on this to give him some experiences when we had multiple people that were on different green screens and we needed them the light to come from the front and cast a shadow on them we did it with that too and it worked mm -hmm. great yeah. so because mm -hmm. it held the shape of the 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 cutout and everything it was pretty nice so that's we had some good luck with this one for a change. <laughs> so. Yeah, it sounds like it. I haven't done uh, much 3D, but it's, I mean, there's a lot to it, I'm sure. I do a lot yeah. of that lighting was layers like that, like Photoshop layers that are a lot of things that are um, <clears throat> comp composited pretty deeply. Um, a lot of the more things that I work on are a lot, a lot layered. Um, it uh, it works great for that. You know, it's linking a light just to separate the layer you're working on, you know, whatever, so you can you can tune the brightness and then, like for things like with firelight and stuff, I, putting expressions on the lights, you know, to pull some of the things to make it, you know, to make it look like, you know, that's going on too. It's, it's, uh, that stuff works really well. The lights and the shadow casting works pretty well too, uh, depending on sometimes the Z sort stuff gets in, in the way of things that you got to. Yeah, deal that with. we had a problem with. Yeah, we had to make sure that on all the polys, we had to make sure we had them in the right order or then, mm -hmm. yes. As you yeah. saw those pieces flying in, if they were out of order, the shadow wouldn't hit the right pieces down. Right. Stream, so we had to make sure that stuff was all correct yeah yeah but all right well i hate to run but i gotta go because i'm about to drive into a place where i need to focus <laughs> okay good to talk to here, everybody Mark. nice yeah, work Mark. Thanks for me. Look awesome, Mark. Thanks. all right talk to you and there goes mark <laughs> I just finished a aspect thing, aspect ratio thing that's a little bit unusual, a multi-screen thing. Um, oh wow! The flame was pretty cool to work with. It was a 
um, a three monitor array, a 75 inch monitor in the center, and then flanked by two 65 inch monitors with 13 inch space between the monitors. Mm. They wanted to use some of this thing though as a seamless panorama <clears throat> um, for things. And they, there was mm. some really nice drone footage that was shot and it was a three 4K monitor. So the resolution was gonna be huge, but I used AI to blow up these 4K drone shots. Uh, it's about 14K and uh, being able to set it up in flame um, where you've got basically the center screen and then the two flanking screens, but an action for each one of them and then going out to separate right nodes. But the one other thing you don't think about unless you're out there on the scene is like the, the 65 inch monitors have uh, the pixel size is different, you know, than how many pixels per inch you get is different than a 75 inch monitor, you know? So the, you got to figure out the scale of how that if you're going to make a seamless panorama go across these things, you got to make sure how much, how, the 65 mon um, inch monitors have to be blown up enough to make it match. Otherwise it, it doesn't work, you know? Wow. Um, so it, it, flame was a great way to do it. I was able to set it up with a grid across everything and then just using like a red, green and blue. Um, actually I can show you my screen at some point. I got a couple of photos that I did of this if you want to see, but it's, yeah. um, anyway, it allowed, allowed you to get that all set up. I figured out just by the, we had the monitors set up physically, you know, so you know how many pixels per inch, so how 13 inches was going to be X number of pixels. And then you knew how, how much you had to offset things from center to get them in place otherwise, you know. So it then allowed you, though, once you had this setup um, in batch done to be able to um, move anything, any of your panor panels or anything around any way you want to crop any way that you want to. And uh, then I'll put everything all at once with three right nodes to the, you know, the left, center and right screen. So it was just one big batch for the, the whole thing. And then you other stuff, the other content, because it was a traditional three screen edit in other ways too, where you're using multi-screen techniques, offsetting, you know, dissolves, all that kind of stuff. So those were all per screen done. You know, so it was all time. You're still watching the whole thing on the final, uh, your final context, but then you're able to just output it all in one, one place at once, which is, works really well. That's amazing. That's so advanced too. I, and David, please share your screen. Cause I love when you show off your stuff. It's so cool. Um, <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, That's really um, cool. Yeah. Let's see here. Yeah. Share this. Um, you did it as just one giant. I mean, obviously the initial setting up is difficult. And after that, it's just one giant. Yeah. That's exactly what I thought. Okay. Let's uh, see. Well, let's, see. Let's, see. let's see what I've got. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, there's two of the three monitors. This, when I'm working with a grid originally on it, this is when I was figuring out. Oh, um, hold on, David. It looks like the yeah, oh. it's a little cut off on our screen. Oh, for some I see. Reason. Yeah, hold on. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's blowing it up, but I think the screen share is only on the Finder window, maybe. Uh, yeah. Hold on. You need to offset your viewport. <laughs> <laughs> it is very funny. <laughs> it's yeah, hang on. It's so meta. <laughs> yeah, that was the most I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you figured it out. Yeah, that's it. Okay, yeah, I just had to scale it down into this. Okay, we had three monitors set up. This is just a grid thrown on here to, um, you know, to, to figure out what the percentage was. It worked out to be about 14% that needed to be um, offset. So what, uh, let's see what I've got here. Hang on. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, that's, yeah. All right, here's here's an example, okay, of a one of the panos um, mm -hmm. spread across, and of course the third monitor to the right, <clears throat> whatever. But just I was able to set up just two of them to know that the math was going to work going to the right side <clears throat> um, because it's it was the same offset. <clears throat> so uh, it was just really, like I say, a matter of figuring out the how many pixels per inch, you know, the diff what the difference was and what that percentage difference was between the two. And that gave me the blow up for the outside screens. Um, <clears throat> so once the 14% blow up was done on that, uh, but then all the horizon lines, everything matched for the panels, everything across the way that it should. It's, um, let's see if I've got. Uh, yeah. Yeah, what's the red, green, blue thing? That's all right. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, uh, that's what I was talking about a little bit the way when I, when I set up. Okay, the left side here, you're seeing the source, that's the 14K plate. Um, and the left, the red and the blue here are the left and right screens. The green is in the middle, it's just hidden at the moment, I guess when I took this shot, whatever. But um, the, uh, 
So what I was able to do, I was able to check that then you take this out to the monitor as you turn those red and green and blue things on and off, whatever, you know, and see if you're getting any bleed through from the back panel to make sure that you're dead on. So you, you could move, you know, just, uh, I could know by moving one of them a pixel either way, whether I was at, had alignment or not on this stuff, you know? So wow. <clears throat> I, I don't have, unfortunately, I don't have any sh shots of the batch in here or anything. I mean, some, maybe some point on a logic lab or something I can show what was done otherwise to do it. But um, the, it was really a re really efficient way to do it once it was all finished. I was able to do it all in one batch. The whole show, it's like a oh, 10 minute thing, you know, that I wrote the music for and did the whole, you know, the, it's a little story they tell. It's for Ducks Unlimited. Um, <laughs> wow. Uh, it was, uh, it's at the Discovery Park of America down in Memphis. But uh, anyway, that's uh, kind of the basis of that. That's so cool. That's so satisfyingly technical. I I, I find myself, uh, I think I'm a pretty technical person. Maybe, I mean, think you're, you are a flame artist. You're all pretty technical. So I think that's satisfying to everybody. Mm -hmm. Reminds me of Sarah Hama with the very first... satisfying. Yeah. yeah, if you have a if you have to come up and, and you may be already familiar with it, I did a job in I think it was September, and it was an immersive space. So it was in, in Manhattan, and so they had like two long walls and a short wall, and we had an anim animation that essentially wrapped the whole room, and so it was like, but we did it as a single file, so it was like nine thousand pixels wide and ten eighty tall uh we did it in after effects but we had like a white on text effect we had like a hundred artist names that would literally write around the room in multiple loops going um and they had in the room they had i think it was six projectors that they had mounted to the ceiling to and they were overlapping and calibrated and they used a which i wasn't familiar with i have i was just looking for i remember the name of the software it's a vj so software that they used so you can take in a single large file and then map it to different projectors and so you have actually extended by cubics in the yeah. software where you can do all of the alignment properly mm -hmm. wow yeah i mean the, the projector software has a module sometimes and sometimes they use i used to do some projection mapping myself they, there was a software called Mad Mappers that mm -hmm. gave you a lot of options for that kind of stuff. And also the project, I can't remember the name of the projection software, but yes. Yeah, I just, I, just like, found, I just found it's called Resolume, if you look it up. Resolume, yes, yes. Oh, it's, it's yes, it is like a VJ software, yep. How do you spell it? R-E-S. Uh, oh, Resolume. Resolume, okay. Resolume yeah, yeah, Resolume. Uh, Mad Mapper's got a lot of really good tutorials on YouTube. Yeah, as well. yeah. It's great. Nice. Well, I'll I'll uh I'll share my screen just for a minute, and I'll show you something a little different than than a lot of other stuff. I'm working on a feature film, and uh, it's for a director friend of mine. It's his documentary, uh, and I offered so boldly to do the conform. Uh, and it's and that's the last time you do that. It's very, it's very hard. <laughs> Might as well do a wedding video or something. <laughs> like, well yeah, so I want to. I want. <laughs> I want to share with you my feature conform. Uh, hold on, I have to full screen though. I hate it when they say, "Hey, you edit something. You can do my wedding video." I don't know. So I can't. Is... This is the beautiful conform. Oh, actually, that's the rough cut. I haven't done. I have to do the titles as well, but. This is what it looks like to see a hour and 30 minute uh, feature film timeline, which is kind of cool. Not but... broken up into reels, that's bold. Oh, you give me too much credit. The, actually, I did talk to uh, our DI department and they told me to break it up into reels and I said no. <laughs> I said, well, we used no. to break them into 20 minute film reels because that's yeah, how, break them into how much you know, film the reel would hold. Yeah, I mean, here's here's the thought process, talk. and I'll I'll show you why I don't like that because I've graded enough stuff, and I'm doing so. I did the conform, and I'm doing the titles, and I'm doing the grading. I've graded enough stuff to not really like the idea of not being able to kind of combine all the same shots together. So here, I have my sources sequence because it's a little bit unwieldy to work there, and so the sources sequence is just one long old sequence. But if I go into the effects tab, I think I have it set up. So you can see every single shot, which is so cool. Um, yeah, I'm uh, with you, Jeff. 
Yeah, thank you, John. I knew you'd be Whoa. on my side. But so here's like every single shot, every little clip of the, I think it's 700 clips. Mm. And what I what I like to do, and I think if you break it up into reels, you might not be able to do this perfectly. Uh, it takes a lot of time and it's a lot, it's a very patient exercise, but I do what's called a, a sort, like a manual sort. I could do it by time code, but I do want to kind of keep scenes together as, in a certain way. And so I've, I, I create a group called a sort group, and then I filter that group, and then I do a custom order. Now, I've already done this. So if you carefully look and see, like, this lady with her daughter is like, you know, there's another B-roll there, and then she appears, like, again throughout the whole, the whole uh, movie. She's in the beginning, she's in the middle, she's in the end. If I turn on this custom order, everybody is all together. So where is she? So this, these are all the shots of that lady. So I don't have to go hunting for it. Um, and I can see it at a glance and it's all together. It's really neat. That's that's super helpful to do. Yeah. Um, Resolve has a feature for that. And I want to see, I've seen it in Flame. It's called A versus C mode, sort of the timeline. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the time code is not good in this documentary. So uh, I can I can do either of those. I chose to do, to do A mode, which keeps it in uh, the order that it was in the timeline. Mm -hmm. Just so I can make sure that I'm uh, keeping things together that should be going together, but then things that I don't want together, I just manually move around. Sure, but well, this is definitely way more sophisticated and, and very cool. Yeah, yeah gr but groups are great in storyboard mode because I did the similar thing on a two and a half hour feature film. Two and a and half. Oh just, my god! Yeah, I know it was crazy, and um, just just being able to call up a group and say, show me all the shots at this location or that mm -hmm. location or. Yeah. Very useful. But I thought, you know, I, it takes that kind of stuff is not my day to day. It's, but it's a fun little side thing that I like doing. And I, and I, my favorite part of the whole process is seeing that storyboard of everything. Mm -hmm. And then I think it's a lot of fun. So I'll have to let you know how it goes as I finish it. But so you should, fun. you should save that as a very large puzzle piece and then give it to the filmmaker. <laughs> Oh yeah, I'll save it as a puzzle piece. I'll give it to Mark and Mark. Can oh, yes, give it to Mark. Yeah, he'll love it. <laughs> For what it's worth, A mode, B mode, and C mode. That all goes back to early CMX uh, yep. yep. from the seventies and eighties. Yep. Okay, yep. tell me, yep. is is there a B mode? Because that seems to be missing yes. from what's uh, B mode. I believe B mode was real order. Yes. Oh. Yes. Wow. I think it's been a long time. A mode chronological. Yes. B mode was a, the a mode source is time. record time, B mode is reels, and C mode is source, source. code. Source yeah. Code, yeah, source. Reels. Interesting. Yeah, that makes sense that it's missing. Huh. That's fun. But uh, And that, you know, that's... Jeff, you can zoom that storyboard view by, you know, like you pan and pan around it. Oh, yeah. you bet. Yeah. Yeah. That all that's... goes back to the days of where you would checkerboard assemble and you'd have to load up your one inch tapes and mm -hmm. just to save time on moving tapes on and off of tape machine. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's right. That's why all that was invented. Yeah. Yeah, Nobody exactly. ever used to look ahead. It's always able to look ahead. <laughs> and then God forbid that the match cut to the dissolve was was built into a different thing. And by the time you put the one inch tape back up to make that match cut, nobody could set the phase or the, the hue or the <laughs> setup correct anymore. The SCH phase would be out and you'd get a yeah. shift and you'd get, you know. You've lost half your audience, guys. <laughs> you, have to time, you have to time your bay first before you even start. <laughs> Jesus, going back to Ampex one inch machines, shift. the VPR threes. Yeah, and they were all hand cranked. Yeah, VPR threes rock. The, the VPI threes were amazing, especially when now with the Zeus Zeus timing thing. <clears throat> I started out with two inch quads, so there. Nice. Oh. <laughs> Same here. Although one inch was invented as well, and I did both, but yeah, I, I used to work here. on two inch. People, the kids always find it amazing that one of the tools I used to set up a piece of videotape was a wrench. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but the greenies, the little tweakers. Yeah, there was to time, tweakers to, to time the bay. You had to get, and you, you had get to hook up, and you had to hook up the air hose to the machine. Mm -hmm. God forbid there was any water in those lines for the Ampex ones. Cause, yeah, cause cause the head, heads they had uh, they had air bearings and vacuum and all gears and pulleys and Ampex got that alive all the way to the DCP. 
DCT. That's right. DCT had air drives. Oh my god! You could cut your finger off if you did, you know got it too close. That thing would literally chop your fingers off. You... They were fast. Yeah. Oh, but they have it right now. I, I, I'm, I'm going. To, I, I can thread it right a one inch machine right now. I've done it so many times. Like I don't know, thirty some odd years ago. But that's. I, I used to have to thread it backwards pretty fast because I did I did I did uh, control room stuff for a while. I think we're losing everybody here. <laughs> one inch <laughs> talk. Well, it, you know, it's good. Nostalgia is a good thing. It's uh, you know, I know that me and Ryan don't have that. Uh, Ryan is my coworker. He's a junior flame artist. I know that he wasn't working with one inch tapes that much. I know. Yeah. Like no, I think it only sucks when, when people thing. like us go on and on about how great it was. And it did wasn't great. It sucked. <laughs> it sucked major. <laughs> it sucked big time. Great for its time. Tim, that's why you're here to remind us about things like that. It, well, well, uh, Patrick will tell us how great it was. You here to remind us how bad it was. <laughs> no, it, Tim, how many channels of ADO did you have? You know? Three. <laughs> there you go. I had I four K scopes. Nice. I only had two ADOs, but when I got K-scopes, I had four. Do you have a cadenza? Yeah, I, I never used run a cadenza. never never used one on a job. I played with one, but I never used one on a job. But we also had a, a Sony um, eight thousand D one switcher. Yeah, yeah. You know, and so everything that we had worked with for years and years, we continued the same way with with um, D one. Oh my God, GPI fire. Oh. <laughs> Well, but before we ride off into the sunset here, does anyone else want to talk about something they're working on that we didn't get to that used to you're itching? Otherwise, I'm we can give something real, away. Just real, real quick, because I'm not on here. Either. This is really the, kind of the first time I've been on here. Welcome. Um, I, I've been at Disney forever, like 30 years. Um, I'm working on a, a little teaser for a new Disney Channel, Disney Plus movie. Wow. And then I've got a meeting tomorrow that they want our group to work on the movie as well to kind of help out the visual effects house and stuff with just some last minute things that need to be tweaks and beauty touch-ups and stuff like that. So that's what, that's what I'm working on now. That's Is great. And, what and group are you in? I, I'm in, well, actually I'm in the marketing for the Disney branded television. Oh, okay. I was in Imagineering Eons ago. I was just curious. Yeah. That Disney started out at Disney channel and then it just grew with ABC and Fox and, you know, everything. So are you still I in Burbank at the, at the same in Burbank, time? 11th floor of the Disney yeah, Channel. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Wow. I almost forgot, but I, I have, I remember you from NAB last year. So yes. hello again. Yes, hello. <laughs> it's good to see you. <laughs> I see some familiar faces. I know, I think Renee, I think you did some stuff for Disney Channel a while back big movie show or something like that. A long or... time ago. Yep. Yeah, I was, ago. In, that was, I was a, in, that was a great there. campaign. Yeah. Yeah. I did some stuff for it in the nineties. Yeah. <laughs> I started in 92, I think it was <laughs> a long time ago. That's and a lifetime Jake ago Parker, for me. I, I see Jake Parker. I, I think I remember you from the master classes at uh, NAB when, when Autodesk was doing that. Yeah, those were fun. Yeah. <laughs> I wish they still did those. You didn't you didn't work with a guy there uh, named Phil Hopbell at all, do you? Who, Jake or me? You, uh, Phil? No, I don't don't recognize the name. Yeah, I don't remember what department he is. He was with Disney for like twenty five years. Hmm. Disney laid off seven thousand people last year. I'm so glad that I survived that. Wow, seven thousand is a lot. Seven thousand, yeah, a lot of people. Wow. Well, congratulations that you survived. I survived. Yeah, we have three, three, three flame artists on staff in our, in our department, and we all survived. But there's SVPs and creative directors, art directors, and stuff that got let go. And yeah. So. Well, you are a valuable asset to the team and a valuable flame artist. I've seen a <laughs> lot of it over the thirty years. I mean, every time it's it's always nerve wracking when when all. That all happens, but uh, I'll be there another couple of years probably and then retire. <laughs> I always say it's I'm going to retire. A, quite an impressive <laughs> list that's building on the Logic Forums, the companies that use Flame. Um, 
it's a good it's a good list it's it's interesting to see some some company names pop up that you didn't realize i i, I guess Stephen, you don't you at disney channel do you, do you work with yellow shoes much no because their name their name popped up on the list they're a client of ours i didn't realize they had an in-house flame but yellow shoes are the disney creative group is that right uh yeah I, they have the creative group in florida i added them to the list from a yeah yeah yeah, a yeah. colleague mine when i was asking her about all the post houses in florida she gave me a big list so oh cool i was like hey who, who uses flame that you know of in florida she's like boom yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah Man, no, i just i just i just pulled that list up i looked at it when it first started i was like oh yeah nice little list and now it, that list is very large <laughs> i've been mm -hmm. adding I don't know who else is i'm sure you're all doing stuff but i've just been like <laughs> Hey, Jim, well, can I say something off topic? Just one one thing. I, I just didn't know if yeah. anybody here, uh, I'm, I'm sure, uh, heard of um, Alex Frisch before. Flame artist, Alex Frisch. Yeah, I worked with him at Method years ago. It's yeah, super I, sad. I, I just want to mention, I, he, was, he was a mentor of mine at 525 back in 95 when I was on the flame. And uh, he, he passed away this week. And mm -hmm. just want yeah, to get a shout out. My producer um, knew him, and I was standing next to her when she read it on the phone, and she just gasped. Yeah, it it just a uh, he he was a fabulous talent, and this is again back in nineteen ninety five, you know, and he would uh, I was uh, as I was mentoring for him, like I was the swing ship that I would come in, and he would always tell me with this French accent, "Oh, Patrick, you can do better," you know, you have to because I that those are the times when we used to roto and paint, but again, after the one inch before all the masking but anyway i just wanted to kind of shout out for alex yeah yeah anyway hmm. very nice thank you well i'm not gonna have anyone follow that up but uh thank you all way to bring it down that, sorry to bring it that's okay i have a great way of bringing it back we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna give something away <laughs> um i've listed all of your names into the ye old giveaway wheel and now i couldn't figure out how to share my wheel screen and share music so you're gonna have to just imagine sing just along imagine some amazing music uh so this giveaway will be for none other than one month of logic academy pro who's walking away with that oh my god it's ryan rinaldi Hey, Logic Academy Pro, one month. Nice. That's, that's actually really helpful. That, congrats. Cool. Yeah, wow. Congrats, man. Thanks. Uh, and, God. of course, it wouldn't be Logic Live if we didn't give away Boris FX Optics. <laughs> so who's getting one year of Boris FX Optics? It's Richard Betts walking away. Hey, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Bring your Photoshop skills to the next level. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> I'm going to close this out and I'll say goodbye once it's what's it's done, but I'm going to close this out with a little, little slideshow presentation. As we know, let me find my, I think there it is. Uh, where are we? Where are we? Thanks for hosting Jeff, by the way. Oh yeah. 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 I'll, uh, let me just talk about a few things and then I'll come back and say goodbye. Where are we? Ah, yes. Oh my God, I'm going too fast. What have I done? Um, no upcoming shows on the docket yet, but uh, keep your eyes peeled and we will have more information as it comes out. We're seeing a black screen at the moment. On it. Yeah, that would be... <laughs> this is great. I don't usually have people giving me feedback live. Uh, that would be because we are there are no upcoming shows and I didn't want to go to the forum post yet. So now you get to hear my thought process. This is great. Um, <laughs> uh, where where was I? Uh, if you haven't signed up for the forum, head on over and do so at forum.logic.tv. While you're there, head on over to Discord. In the latest episode of the Logic Podcast, Glenn talked with John Hollis, flame artist, director, musician. Take a look at that if you're interested in his story. Clocking in at 2,134 subscribers on YouTube. Uh, we're not on YouTube right now, but if you're listening to this from the future, you are on YouTube. Uh, if you haven't already, 
hit the subscribe button so that that number can go even higher. Uh, we, uh, where are we? If you'd like to support what we're doing here on Logic, please become a patron by signing up at patreon.com slash Logic TV. We did not give out any swag today, but be sure to check out the Logic Merch Store to pick up your own Logic Merch. Thank you to Boris Effects for sponsoring Logic Live. If you'd like to save 15% on all of their offerings, you can head on over to logic.tv slash Boris Effects. Click on those links to take advantage of that awesome savings. And a final thank you to AJA for also sponsoring Logic Live. They've been together with Flame since 2006. And that is it for Logic Live. Wait, I have another, I can do another share. Hello, I'm back. Video, share. Uh, I did it. Thank you guys for being here. This was different, right? Very different. Appreciate. Oh, wow. Look, Sinan put on his hat. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Uh, I guess I'll be editing this video to fix Mark Wellington's uh, career, so he's not <laughs> fired. Um, His overshare. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, thanks, everyone. This was fun. I appreciate I think some being slight here. black yeah, thanks, in order. You, yeah, you have the power, Jeff. <laughs> thanks, Jeff. I could. You're right. I didn't, get a, I didn't get a chance to make my joke. I was going to be saying, "Well, I'm working on my tangent." <laughs> oh, John, John and I, what are we working on? We're working on our tan over here. <laughs> That's good. But uh, thanks, everybody. Appreciate yeah. seeing you. Appreciate it. Bye, guys. See you thanks, next time. Thanks very much. Thank thanks, you. everybody. Bye, guys. Thank you. See you next time. Bye.